business and psychology by hugo munstenberg eighteen sixty three to nineteen sixteen this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org business and psychology in no direction has man progressed so much in the last two thousand years of civilization as in his commercial endeavors we are too easily inclined to fancy that mankind has changed and has made progress in every line but that is certainly an illusion no buildings have been built in the twentieth century so beautiful as those of the old greeks no dramas have been written so wonderful as those of their great poets no philosophy has been thought so significant as that of the great greek thinkers and the statues chiseled two thousand years ago are still models for our generation our legal life is not superior to that of the old romans nor are our state and city politics essentially different from those of olden times social intercourse has not changed much we have the same motives the same hopes and fears ambitions and jealousies man is the same in his family circle man is the same before his god we are driven by hunger and desire for power by love and reverence like untold generations before us science in industry but in the economic life with its production of goods for practical use and their transportation and distribution and the exchange of possessions the change is indeed a fundamental one the modern factory and the modern credit system the modern railway and steamer and cable are incomparable with the primitive methods of mankind or with anything which antiquity or medieval times or even recent centuries have produced it seems as if we could nowhere measure the progress of the civilized human race more directly than in the glorious changes in commerce and industry every feature of the market and of production has been influenced by the wonderful inventions and discoveries and no less by the splendid achievements in new methods of exchange and organization harvesting machines have replaced the primitive tools of the past electric wires spin a net of communication over the lands of the world which are united by commerce and industry powerful works of human invention dig the mines and in the factories operations are performed to which the highest scientific work of the physicist and chemist had to show the way yes there seems to be no science in our universities which has not contributed to this victory of the practical desires of man over stubborn nature the knowledge of mineralogists and botanists and zoologists of mechanical engineers and electricians of physiologists and chemists has been brought into service the cooperation of the whole world is so complete that we are no longer aware how many hundreds of thousands have to work with the most perfect instruments of modern transportation and factory production to satisfy our needs if we sit down to a meal and use the plate and the glass the fork and the spoon and the napkin and take the sugar and the pepper or what not we give no thought to those thousandfold processes which were necessary to bring each of those products to the grasp of our hand we take it for granted that the best machines have worked for us to weave the napkin and refine the sugar all the knowledge of the century is thus made contributory to the production and distribution of the economic goods of the world and science is the real foundation on which the business of our time rests however little the individual business man may be aware of the tremendous amounts of intellectual work which was necessary for every forward step in practical life he presses the electric button at his desk to call the office boy or touches a switch to light the room he uses the telephone or sends a wireless message and gives no moment's thought 
to the fact that numberless scholars in their laboratories had to devote their energies to the securing of these simple effects psychology in industry in this situation of our present day in which everybody in the world of affairs the captain of industry and the worst paid working man the banker and his office boy the merchant and the clerk knowingly or unknowingly make the fullest use of the results of science it is a striking contrast to see how pitifully little use is made of that science which deals with the human mind the science of the human mind psychology is today as solid as scholarly and as much worked out as a science of physical and chemical nature and its field is surely no smaller since the whole world of man's thinking and feeling and doing and remembering and attending and willing is involved but the progress of economic life has hardly been touched by the stream of knowledge which flows from this psychological source the psychological expert is hardly heard of while his older brothers the electrical expert and the chemical expert are much sought and respected everywhere yet we have only to look around us in the commercial and industrial spheres to discover quickly that after all the human mind plays the greatest role and deserves the most thorough study by everyone who would succeed in business life it is certainly important to know the machines in the factory and only when the machines are well cared for and well adjusted to their purpose can the manufacturer hope that his industrial output will be better than that of his rivals but is the mind of the working man not of equal or rather of higher importance in the work of the factory how can we expect the best output if we are interested only in the purely technical side of the process and ignore the great and significant fact that a man with feelings and emotions with ideas and impulses with memory and attention stands behind the machine and has to serve and has to master it if his attention flags if his mental fatigue interferes with his best work if his interests carry him away if he has not the right mental power to discriminate what he ought to discriminate must not the work suffer even more than by an out-of-date machine the business house may be installed with a splendid equipment the department store may be a model establishment the banking house may have its special wires and the best adding machines yet success and failure must depend upon the achievements of those who sit at the desk or who walk the floor or who stand behind the counter and these achievements depend ultimately upon the mental powers of the employer and the employee their intellect and character their talent and temperament are a thousand times more important and decisive than the splendor of the technical equipment if the right men are in the right places and if the work is adjusted to the mental conditions and mental demands any difficulties can be overcome on the other hand if the needs of the mind are neglected if faulty minds are at work if the service and output are not adjusted to the desires and feelings of the mind the results will be deplorable however well the technical expert may have done his share the power of the mind in business all business is ultimately the affair of minds it starts with minds it works through minds it aims to serve minds by industry and commerce and transportation alike the demands of minds are to be satisfied and every step needed for this satisfaction involves the attention the thought the ideas the emotions the instincts the impulses of human minds is it not absurd to call the best trained specialist for the supervision of those machines and yet to be satisfied with the most superficial amateurish impressions when it comes to the judgment on that much more important factor in the play the human mind the manufacturer takes it for granted that the chemical process by which he dyes his wares must be judged by chemists 
but whether the minds of his thousands of employees are in the right attitude are prepared for the work and are able to perform it by their inborn make-up is left to the fancies of the foreman without ever consulting the psychologist who devotes his studies to such problems of the mind it is as if a barrier separated the quiet scholarly investigation of the student of the mind from the practical work of those whose success depends upon an understanding of the mind we can hardly imagine that this would happen in any other field as soon as the scholars have made their discoveries in the physical laboratory these are at once carried into the market new machines are built and only the latest is welcome but the faithful study of the mind is left to the psychological scholars in the market which is entirely dependent upon the working of the mind remains untouched by such knowledge everything goes on as it did thousands of years ago everybody feels sure that he knows enough about the life of the human soul everybody behaves as if it were very difficult to understand the physics and chemistry of the commercial products of the raw material and of the machines and as if it were important to gather all possible expert knowledge but at the same time everybody feels certain that he knows enough about the mind of the customer and the mind of the working man about the mind of the clerk and the mind of the advertisement reader about the mind of the manufacturer and the mind of the sales girl here too he shows not the slightest interest in drawing on the knowledge of the expert and making the fullest use of the scientific discoveries this attitude must be fundamentally changed the last few years have brought a most promising beginning of such a change interest in the science of mental life has been awakened in the circles of commerce and industry various conditions have favored it and not a few far-seeing business men and many ambitious young men recognize that the commercial success of the future will depend still more upon the mastery of mind than upon the mastery of matter man is more important than the machine thoughts more valuable than equipment personality is the biggest factor in business how to study business psychology but it is sure that such better knowledge of the human mind as it enters into the market of the world cannot be supplied by a mere superficial gossiping about the mysteries of the mind no one will have real technical control of nature who knows about natural science only anecdotes and curious little details he must enter into a solid study of the natural facts which the scientists of the age have cleared up in their laboratories it is not in the least different with the science of the mind today mere freak stories of queer mental happenings or uncanny reports of mental abnormalities can never be a substitute for a thorough detailed acquaintance with the laws of mental behavior the man of affairs who wants to shape events in the sphere of the mind must have the energy to study the psychological science from its foundations he must not ask at every step whether this bit of information can be of use at his desk in the office or in the factory he must at first make himself acquainted with important facts without always keeping an eye on the practical application in short he must study psychology as if he had a pure interest in the understanding of the principles just as an engineer must learn his mathematics without asking eagerly at every new equation whether he can make use of it in drawing his design the student of psychology who has the interests of commerce and industry and of personal efficiency at the bottom of his mind must of course not be drawn into byways which may lead to other fields of life but in those chief roads to the understanding of man he must aim toward a thorough knowledge the essential condition for all this is only that he be convinced that modern psychology is really an exact careful science like the sciences of nature 
and that this modern psychology has something of real value to offer to the man of practical life but let us not forget that there is no business psychology outside of the one great psychological science business psychology means a psychology in which the chief emphasis is laid on those mental functions which are significant for business life and in which so far as possible the other aspects of psychology are omitted if any one were to try to present business psychology without going into the study of the foundations principles and laws of psychology in general he would offer useless and misleading material the business man would at first feel more at home because he would hear talk about the matters of his daily concern but at the end he would stand where he stood at the beginning he would not see the real deeper connections of the facts and these alone can help him to go beyond the commonplaces of daily practice business psychology is psychology or it is nothing at all hence we shall not be afraid to discuss many points and principles which seem difficult only he who has the energy to master the theory can reach a point at which he sees his mental surroundings with a psychologizing eye as soon as he succeeds in that he can solve any special problem for himself and is made independent of any unscientific chance advice the basic theory is in the end the most practical test questions one has the progress of civilization been uniform in all directions two what has brought about the tremendous development in industrial progress during the last fifty years three have you ever taken an inventory at the close of the day to see how many inventions and contributions from science served you in your activities of the day four how can psychology contribute to industrial progress five why has psychology been neglected in practical business affairs six have you ever observed work where the mechanical equipment seemed to be modern and complete but where the psychological conditions for the work were most unfavorable end of business and psychology by hugo munstenberg